So we have talked cheap controllers for the Xbox and we have talked pro controllers for the PS4. But we've not yet touched on cheap controllers for the PS4. Now with Sony, this is a little awkward because they don't really license out their products as much as Microsoft does. There's really only one company that makes a lot of more affordable controller options and that's Hori. One of the more recent releases being the Hori Mini PS4 controller. Now this is a controller that we have touched on a little bit before and the main idea is that it is a cheaper alternative to the DualShock 4 which is wired and is specifically made for kids or people with smaller hands in mind which is why it has a grip design that's very similar to an older controller like an SNES versus the more recent grip designs we see in a lot of modern controllers. Now if you are used to that grip design you like that there's actually a whole lot of good stuff going on with this controller. It's got great buttons, I really like the sticks, good d-pad. The only stuff about it that is kind of bad is the shoulder buttons feel a little awkward. They work but the pressing down mechanism just doesn't have the best feedback. It does not have an actual working touchpad. It does have a button that you can use for pressing in the touchpad, but any games that use you know, motion controls, which is very rare nowadays, aren't gonna work with this controller. And something that it shares with all of the controllers on this list is that it does not have a headphone jack. Now on the PS4, this can potentially be not an issue at all for you because a lot of the official PS4 headsets are Bluetooth, but if you like using a wired headset, that's gonna be a big problem for any of these wired controllers. Now, as I said, Sony is very stingy with their licensing. So if you want a controller that's not from Hori, you're gonna have a bit of a tougher time. You're not really gonna see stuff in many brick and mortar shops. Instead, you're gonna have to turn to the internet for good old fashioned controllers made in China from companies you have never heard of, which is exactly what led me to the Larego. Now this is actually one of the ones that had higher reviews on Amazon, which is why I checked it out and bought it. And I gotta say, while I did read good reviews, I still went in with kind of this negative mindset of like, oh, I don't know, it's unlicensed, it's probably gonna be weird. And while it does have its downsides, it's actually surprisingly a really good controller. All the buttons on the front face feel great, good triggers. The sticks were a little too stiff at first, but after using them extensively, it got a lot more loosened up and feels more natural. Still a little tighter than like an official PS4 controller, but still very usable. Also, it's very easy to notice that this is clearly meant to be the same shell design as a DualShock 4, but also features these kind of rubberized grips that make it a lot more comfortable actually. Uh, that being said, this controller still definitely has some downsides aside from the obvious fact that it's well wired. First off, the D-pad is terrible. It's fine enough if you're gonna play a game where the D-pad has very minimal use, like you just have to hit up every now and then, but if you're playing, say, a fighting game and you like using D-pads, this thing is awful. Also, while it does have a touchpad, it actually doesn't do anything. I mean, the button works if you have to hit a button for the touchpad, but if you need any games that use the touchpad controls, which is pretty rare nowadays, this doesn't work at all. So if you wanna have that functionality, avoid this. That aside though, if you're able to put up with that and all the usual downsides of a cheaper wired controller, this is actually a surprisingly really good choice. Now, of course, I wanted to try more than just one unlicensed controller option. And another one that really stood out to me visually was this one right here from Snakebite. I like the color design. I like the fact that it uses symmetrical sticks like the PS4 controller, but it actually has a grip style like the Xbox One. A little bit good of a mix in here. But the thing that kind of stops me from giving you a full official thought on this is that this one that I got has a defective home button, so I can't actually log in and use it at all. So I wanted to read some other reviews of it, kind of see if this is a common issue with it or not. And the consensus I'm seeing is that if you get a working one of these, it's actually a really solid controller, which I'm inclined to believe because honestly, just feeling the sticks, the buttons, all of it feels solid for a cheap third party, especially unlicensed controller. However, not only were there people experiencing home button issues like me, but a lot of people had defective shoulder buttons, cables that were ripping apart, all kinds of issues. Now, of course, this can be covered by warranty. You can ship it back, get another one, but buyer beware, it's gonna be a little annoying to deal with that. So if you wanna take the risk, this might be worth looking into, but uh, not so much. Now coming full circle, we have another controller from Hori. Now unlike the earlier one we talked about, the Mini, which was a recent release, this is actually one of the older ones they've done. In fact, this was the first officially licensed third-party controller for PS4. This is the FPS Plus, and as the name implies, it's designed with FPS games in mind. Now this controller is more expensive than the other ones on this list, but it is still cheaper than an official DualShock 4. And as a result, it is a wired design that does feature some kind of minor pro controller options. Now, first off, design wise, very clearly, this is based more on an Xbox One controller. You have the grip design like an Xbox One, the sticks have been moved around, and it uses a hair trigger design rather than the more full pull you'll have on a PS4, which I do like this design better on here. Now as for what kind of pro features this controller has, there's a couple that are very standard and one that's a little more 
more unique. As for the standard ones, you're able to remap some of the buttons on the fly. You have a turbo button for being able to have rapid button presses on a single one. But the more interesting one is this switch on the bottom here, which actually allows you to change the right stick sensitivity. So for FPS games specifically in mind, you're able to do things like make slower stick movements if you need more precision aiming versus when you just need to move wildly about. In other games, the usefulness of this is a little more varied and just not as much. So interesting design, not as cheap, but if you're looking for something specifically for FPS games, pretty solid option. Now, while this is from Hori, like I said, it's one of their older designs and it's not one they're really pushing anymore. And part of that is due to a recent announcement that came out right as we were shooting this video. Turns out, Hori has been working on a new wired PS4 controller where the very specific sales pitch is that it is a PS4 controller for people who like the Xbox One controller better. In fact, just even looking at it, you can see the similarities. Now, unlike the FPS Plus, this is not going to feature any kind of, oh shit, is this wireless? Oh this is a wireless controller, it's a Bluetooth. This is a wireless Bluetooth controller. Now they haven't actually done official pricing just yet and it looks like it is gonna be released only in the UK for now. So we're gonna try and import one or see when it's coming to North America so we can compare that price-wise to all these controllers as well as just how it handles compared to a DualShock 4.